All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate that. A very pleasant good afternoon or good evening to you. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. This is ExtremeHealthRadio.com, and my name is Justin. We are currently broadcasting worldwide through the magic of technology from Southern California, so we appreciate you uh, joining us. Currently, we're doing about three shows per week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and we're hoping to uh, expand on that in the future, so thank you for joining us. Today is Wednesday, October 10th, 2012, and this is episode number 20, so you can find it at ExtremeHealthRadio.com slash 20. And all of our shows are transcribed with show notes, so uh, make sure to refer back to this page in a few weeks. If you have a question for me or for our guests, you can send them to justin at extremehealthradio.com. Or if you're a little more brave, you can call our voicemail line. It goes straight to voicemail, so don't be shy. It's 949-391-7363, and I will play your message to our guests live on the air. This show is brought to you by the Vitamix Blender. If you're in the market to buy a Vitamix, please consider doing it through us. We would love that. We'd make a little commission. Um, You can find that at extremehealthradio.com slash Vitamix. Before I introduce our guest, Dr. Nina Silver, I'd like to talk about our show schedule coming up. We've got amazing guests all lined up for you uh, up until the end of the year, actually. So this Friday, we've got Nadine Artemis, who is a master of essential oils, and she does a lot of great work on teeth protocols to help heal your teeth. And if you know anything about the teeth and how important they are to keep healthy, you'll definitely want to tune into that show. And then we've got Ramil Nagel, who wrote Cure Tooth Decay, a great book that I have, and he's on Monday, and he's talking about how to rebuild your enamel how to fix your cavities through diet. You'll never hear this from your dentist. I will guarantee you that. And we've got Dr. David Steenblock on Wednesday the 17th, and he's doing a lot of cutting edge research and information on healing using things like chelation and stem cell therapies. He's working with stroke victims and heart attack victims and people that have had cancer. Amazing guy in Orange County, California. So check out that show when you get a moment. And I'm really excited about today's guest, Dr. Nina Silver, PhD, really, really exciting. You could find her website at rifehandbook.com, and I will read a little bit of her bio and then introduce her. Uh, she's a writer, educator, artist, and musician, and she's devoted her life to the exploration of healing on mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual levels. Truly holistic. Uh, her early training in music led to subsequent studies in spirituality and physics, which are all complementary paths to her lifelong passion the science of frequency. And for 15 years, Nina had a private practice in body-mind psychotherapy based on the groundbreaking principles of physician and natural scientist Wilhelm Reich, which I'm sure you've heard of. And then in 1996, she received her PhD from the Union Institute in Transformational Psychology, which is a multidisciplinary program of holistic health psychology and gender studies. Uh, Then she had some health crises of her own, and she started researching Royal Rife and his inventions, along with other electromedicine therapies. Her extensive knowledge and effective and safe holistic protocols eventually coalesced into the Rife Handbook. And as Dr. Nina Silver's knowledge base grew, the 448-page paperback edition of the Rife Handbook grew into a hardback volume containing 768 pages which is incredible. I have the book and it's absolutely huge. And uh, the latest version of the book was written and published in 2011 and it's called The Rife Handbook of Frequency Therapy and Holistic Health. So I wanted to say also at the beginning of this interview, we actually lost about a minute of the half, a minute and a half of the interview and I apologize for that. So we're going to pick up right now where we left off and we um, kind of cut right in. So I apologize for that. But here we go with this interview with Nina Silver, PhD. To destroy it or disable it. So uh, some of the listeners might be familiar with the old Memorex commercial. Mm Mm-hmm. When you had a soprano singing a really high, pure, focused tone, and she shattered a crystal glass, uh, it can happen. It's not as common as what's normally portrayed, but that demonstrates the principle of resonant frequency. Everything in the universe has an intrinsic vibration. Mm-hmm. So the, the so Royal Rife figured out that if you could figure out 
what the vibratory rate was of the microbes that are implicated in various diseases, once you disabled or killed the microbe, then the immune system of the body would clean up the waste and without the continued uh, mycotoxic release from these microbes, the person would start to heal. So his first uh, experiment in the early 1930s were basically with eye diseases and cancers, and they did really well. Now, a rice machine, and I'm using that term generically, any electromedical device that is based on the principles that Royal Rye formulated, mm -hmm. it conveys frequencies through two means. One is current, very small amounts that the person uh, gets into their body by holding on to electrodes. And obviously you're not going to have it at a really high volume because the idea is not to get hurt or to be uncomfortable, but the current goes into the body and it targets the microbes and then they're either disabled or outright shattered. Okay. M more often disabled. The second way of imparting frequencies into the body is through a tube uh, filled with plasma. Plasma is a supercharged uh, gas. Royal Rice filled his tubes with argon, neon, helium, he experimented with different noble gases, and when uh, high voltage was sent into these tubes filled with gases, mm -hmm. they lit up, and they become plasma, which is another state of matter. And the frequencies were imparted, actually, into the body through the air, via an electromagnetic field. Mm. So that's the original equipment that Royal Rife used. It's completely safe. As I said before, it's non-invasive. And if you get the right frequencies, it's virtually 100% effective. But I'll, I, I need to add a mm -hmm. caveat to that. Whether or not somebody heals with rice therapy depends on a lot of things. It depends on, as you mentioned before, their detoxification channels. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that uh, the body can handle all the microbial waste from the destroyed uh, pathogens. You need to make sure that the person's eating right, drinking enough water. That's really important mm -hmm. because... Uh, the body uses up a lot of minerals when it detoxifies. So in my book, I have an entire protocol of what to do when you're giving yourself a rice session, mm -hmm. how long the therapy should be, how long for each frequency, how long for each session, uh, how many days in a row you should do the sessions for, and over how long a period of time. And that depends pretty much on what disease you have, although it also is, of course, tailored to individuals' needs and how much they can handle. Mm -hmm. You know what I like about your book, too, is after going through it, um, I like the fact that it, it's sort of, like you said in, in the beginning, it's a holistic primer. And you know, because what we're trying to do, obviously, is to not have people become symptomologists, right? So, you know, right. in our culture, oh, I got a headache, I'll take an Advil and, you know, and just go, I'll keep banging my head against the wall, but I'll take a head, uh, you know, an Advil. And what your book is doing is, is, you know, talking about, you know, liver health and why, maybe figuring out why some of these things are happening to you so that you can become, empower yourself to become your own doctor essentially so that you won't have to just have a symptom and use a certain frequency, get rid of it, and then go back to your old life, right? That's exactly right. You put it really well. Uh, what uh, Even Royal Rife did not want to see people use this therapy in an allopathic manner, meaning a pop a pill, 
get rid of the symptom. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, uh, say you have, um, well, say you have cancer. Um, Many people, they think that they're getting rid of the cancer by removing the tumor, but you may be getting rid of it locally where the tumor was removed, but the conditions in the body that caused the creation of the tumors in the first place mm-hmm. need to be addressed. Otherwise, there's, uh, uh, quote-unquote, people you know, they get it again. Well, they never got rid of it. You don't get it again. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, there is cleansing, S-E-F-T, made from four herbs that's really effective, Mm -hmm. Uh, juicing. I have a Vitamix, too. I love it. Oh, they're great. And, uh, (laughs) you know, you need to take care of the whole person. And I also talk in my book about emotions because... When we have fear or worry or seething anger and resentment, all that stuff uh, has a correlation in the biochemical hormones that are produced in our body. Mm -hmm. And these hormones um, are acidic. And when there are too many acids in the body, they build up and then it causes a whole cascade of pH problems. Mm-hmm. You know what? Um, in my, you know, learning throughout the years, and I'm sure yours as well, it, I'm just, it's finally starting to dawn on me that it's. It seems to me that health and being a strong, vibrant person is really all about energy. Because if you think about it, the food we eat is just information and vibration, and same right. with the water. And so the food just happens to be a way of, of getting, um, I guess, you know, nutrients into the body. But, you know, you're, it's almost like we're bypassing uh, the food when we're doing things like meditation and prayer and using Rife technology and lowering our stress levels. These are all ways of almost dealing with yourself at the innermost core instead of Instead of through diet, I mean, diet's huge, obviously, but it, it almost seems like it's going a level deeper than diet because diet is essentially uh, frequency and vibrations, too. That's right. Um, wow, it's just fascinating. So, um, so I wanted to ask you, too, um, about, the, uh, about the, your book. And um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about you mentioned cancer and you mentioned uh, candida. But essentially, there are the list is endless of um, of issues that you can use the Rife machine for, right? That's correct. Uh, the the sections in my book um, they're divided into pathogens, for instance, bacteria, viruses, candida fungi, molds, and yeast, mm-hmm. and also parasites, meaning worms and flukes and things like that. And then uh, the frequency directory is also, that's chapter five. Uh, Some of the categories are arthritis in joints, bone and skeleton, cancer, chemical poisoning and detoxification, Mm -hmm. dental, ears, eyes, gastrointestinal tract, all the glands, headache, heart, blood, and circulation, injuries, insect bites, liver and gallbladder, lymphatic system, and then men, their sexual functioning and all the reproductive organs, all the women's reproductive organs and also breasts. And then there's a separate category, mind and emotions, muscles, nervous system and brain, uh, regeneration and healing, respiratory tract, skin, tuberculosis, benign tumors, ulcers, urinary tract. So it really covers every body part, every symptom, Mm -hmm. every formal medical name of the disease, as well as uh, just the, um, a general wellness. Um, there, there, there are actually two functions of Rife therapy. Rife originally developed his uh, technology to deal with disabling microbes, mm-hmm. but you, know, you mentioned that we're all f- frequency and energy. Well, many of these uh, frequencies that are in my book have the ability to stimulate 
the cells in the body to function better, and that's independent of the function of disabling microbes. Interesting. So you could almost use it as a way to um, increase your level of health if you have no, no issues at all. Yes. Wow, that's, that's fascinating. So, um, so those are the two basic ways of using the, the Rife machine. And so I wanted to talk about the, you know, the detoxification pathways and things like that. When you dis if you disable an, a microorganism, um, essentially, don't you have two issues the body has to deal with? Um, whatever toxins perhaps may be stored in that organism as well as the actual carcass, I guess would be a good way to right. put it, of the organism itself? That's right. Um, so, so your body needs to you know, be strong enough to, to detox both of those substances out um, after a rife session is done, right? Right. Well, most of the frequencies uh, do not shatter a microbe, which is a good thing. Because if you were talking about shattering a microbe, mm -hmm. you'd have a flood of waste material pour out, so then you'd have more surface area of junk in the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. There's a really impressive uh, uh, little video clip online on the website of Dr. James Bear. He took a uh, pond scum, it's a paramecium, mm -hmm. and he exposed it to a particular frequency, and you can see the creature get really jittery, and it starts to vibrate because it's very agitated, mm -hmm. and in about 10 seconds, all of a sudden, you see its guts spilling out. Really? It's quite dramatic. Yeah. Wow. I, 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 um, I have that clip in, in a slideshow that I show people. Wow. And it really, it, it's very dramatic, but most of the time, instead of outright shattering, uh, the frequencies might disable a portion or a part mm -hmm. of the particular microorganism so that it just kind of poops out, you know, it mm -hmm. just gets really tired and it stops moving. And that's actually more preferable because you want as little surface area of waste material in your bloodstream as possible. Right. But regardless of which way the microbes are disabled or killed or uh, devitalized, which is the expression Dr. Reif used, mm -hmm. um, you know, once the microbes are no longer viable, uh, the, Im the immune cells uh, say, oh, here is some junk we need to take care of. And then the person's in immune cells and the rest of the detoxification uh, apparatus starts to move the stuff out of the system. Uh, that's why it's really important to drink water, mm -hmm. because you want to dilute the amount of poisons that are floating around in your bloodstream. If people won't drink water, they should not do this therapy. Right, that makes sense. Yeah, you want to be able to eliminate all of this uh, you know, dead material. Um, so I wanted to ask you too about um, the, I know you've got a whole section or a whole separate book actually on the sauna and um, how people can use the saunas for health and for healing. And you've also got a whole part of the Rife Handbook talking about color therapy, which I thought was fascinating. So along the lines of the color therapy, you were mentioning that um, some of the colors that you mentioned were, were pink for being... Um, you know, less aggressive and blue for healing and um, and things like that. So talk a little bit about the color therapy uh, portion of the Rife Handbook. Sure. Well, color has been used uh, since way back for various uh, types of healing. Um, it's known that if, if, you're, uh, if you put a pink cloth on somebody and you muscle test them, they will be weaker than, say, if you put a green cloth on them. Pink is a relaxant, mm -hmm. which is why, um, as I mentioned in Chapter 3, sometimes uh, men's prisons, uh, the prison walls in men's prisons 
are painted pink, it's deliberately done to decrease the level of aggression. Hmm. Uh, but there's an even better way to use color, and that's when you use wavelengths of light um, that are not necessarily pigments on cloth or on paper. Mm -hmm. But um, if you were to break up uh, the prism of the sun into various colors, each distinct color has a particular frequency. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been many people who have been using these frequencies of color. One of them was a Dr. Babbitt, but Dr. Dinsha Gadiali, mm -hmm. uh, the turn of the century, he took Babbitt's uh, color therapy protocol and he improved on it. And what you have is uh, something called spectrochrome. And I've used it and I promote it in my book because it's really inexpensive. Anybody can do it. You don't need to plug it in. Mm -hmm. And even though it works a little slower than perhaps right therapy, in some ways it's, it's more far-reaching because basically if, if you're missing a particular frequency of color in your aura and in your body, you'll manifest various symptoms, which we call disease. So what Din Shah did was he took very precise colors of different panes of glass. He shone a light through the glass, and he shone it onto a person in a darkened room. And you're basically bathing your energy field in a particular wavelength. And it had to be those specific colors. It had to be a particular green. couldn't be forest green or mm -hmm. emerald green. It had to be a truer green. It couldn't be pale yellow. It had to be a bright yellow. It was very, very specific. Hmm. The, <clears throat> well, the FDA um, hounded him, too. No surprise. Yeah, shocking. But, sure. but, <laughs> <laughs> but what we have now... Um, his, his light boxes that use glass were destroyed, but the Dinsha Health Society has um, books that tell you how to use colors, and they also have places where you can buy transparent plastic sheets that are the particular wavelengths of color that Dinsha originally used. And you get these uh, plastic sheets mm -hmm. from theatrical supply houses and what they basically are are gels that you put on theater lighting okay so you can call these places and say I want the complete set of the din shop colors they'll know exactly what you mean and you can get them and what kind of places do you call theatrical uh, playhouses and things well yeah they're they're all in the book uh -huh. um, they're all in the book Wow so I've used um, you can either shine it, uh, you know, clip up the gels to a uh, $10 light that you get in the hardware store, mm -hmm. and you can either shine it on yourself, on the bare skin, whatever area you want to treat, in the dark, or you can take the sheets during daylight and just lie down and put the sheets over your bare skin on the areas that you want to treat. Wow. And that works, too. And I noticed... I oh, sorry. Oh, oh I was going to say that um, I stopped a gallbladder attack in 20 minutes. Really? With a color, lem mm -hmm, with a color lemon. It's oh. a great therapy. Oh, I've used gosh. it for my dogs. And in your book, you mention being able to wrap these color sheets around like a glass cup of water and, and use it that way, and you can drink the water? Yes. Yeah. Wow, that's that's amazing. Um, and so, are people using these color therapies for for really difficult diseases like cancer, or are they mainly to be used on you know um, lesser issues of the body? You could use it for cancer and Lyme disease. The same things that you use a uh, rice therapy for, you can use a color therapy for. Wow, that's so um, amazing. 
I, 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 you know, people, well, I think a lot of people don't really appreciate how powerful this color therapy can be, mm-hmm. Part, partly because in many cases it doesn't work as fast as the rice therapy, but also maybe to some people it sounds very simplistic. You know, all you do is you put a colored sheet over your body mm-hmm. and lie down. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a little bit fantastic, but when you actually think of it in terms of you are nourishing your energy field with the wavelengths that are missing, the frequencies that are missing, and in this case it just happens to be visible light because that's the part of the spectrum that the frequencies are on. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Well, um, we're going to take a short break, but I've got a lot of questions for you. So um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. This is uh, Nina Silver, and her website is rifehandbook.com, R-I-F-E, handbook.com. And we'll be back after this short break. Hey, what's up, everybody? I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Paleo Summit that's put together by our man, Sean Croxton. And this is a summit that took place live over eight days. And I believe there's 23 video presentations, 23 audio files, 18 hours of cutting edge information, and 300 pages of transcripts. Now, this program is really an amazing program if you're looking to make some permanent changes in your diet. And if you're tired of struggling with uh, fat loss or weight loss and you're struggling with food addictions and you're just looking for a permanent solution, this is definitely something you want to check out. You can find it at extremehealthradio.com slash paleo summit and they talk about things like gluten sensitivities, how to curb food addictions and, and cut back on food cravings, how animal foods and things like cholesterol do not cause heart disease or degenerative degener- Generative diseases and how to deal with things like bone loss and cancer and muscle pain, autoimmune diseases, and um, how to burn fat and all that kind of stuff. So, if you're looking to change your diet once and for all, definitely check that out. It's extremehealthradio.com slash paleo summit. All right, let's get back to this interview. All right, we are with. Dr. Nina Silver, PhD, with her website, rifehandbook.com. I highly, highly recommend getting her book. Uh, it is so worth it. I've been going, pouring through it, and it's just, it's so worth it. Um, but Nina, I wanted to ask you about all of these issues that we have are having today with EMFs and radiation coming from the walls, the wiring in the walls, and uh, not being grounded and all of these issues that uh, that that are happening at an electromagnetic level. Uh, what are some of the things that you do to protect yourself from this type of radiation? That's a good question. Uh, before I answer, I just want to uh, make clear that uh, the frequencies or energy emissions from electromedical devices, of which rice machines are one subset. Uh-huh are entirely different from the harmful EM fields that you're talking about. So okay. I just want you know, because some people might be concerned about that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, certainly uh, um, harmful electromagnetic radiation is a real problem. I uh, personally, I have these little stickers that I put on my phones, uh, of rare earth that harmonize uh, the radiation so that it um, it neutralizes it about 90 percent. Uh, see what this harmful EMF does. Mm-hmm. It's chaotic and it interferes with the um, the atomic structure of the person. So if you're interfering with somebody's atomic structure, you can imagine all the biochemical... Um, like synapses within the body kind of thing? Yes. But there are a lot, there are a lot of things that you can do to minimize uh, EMF exposure. Mm-hmm. One is to use wired internet. And I know that to many people, uh, <coughs> wireless internet is a staple. Mm. But 
I really felt a huge difference in my house when we had wireless. Mm -hmm. I got jittery, antsy, unfocused, and we got rid of our wireless emitter, and everything's wired. Yeah, we were... We recently did the same thing. We uh, we still have a wireless router, but we keep it off all the time. Um, but we've recently, you know, recently rewired our phone, so we have we you know we have uh, don't have the cordless phones anymore, and because uh, that's the kind of stuff just puts a it puts a damper on your immune system, doesn't it? Right, definitely. Wow, and so I'm sitting here right now, uh, grounded um, on a on a on a mat. Um, and now I don't know if that technology is any good or, or, or what, but I, I use it. <laughs> Do you know about that? A lot of people find the mats helpful. Uh-huh. Um, one thing that is absolutely free and easy to do is to walk barefoot on sand, on dirt, on the grass. And you'll get the healing electrons from the earth and, uh, it, it's it's very, very powerful. I was in Korea to give a seminar last year, and I, you know, 13-hour trip, jet lag, mm-hmm. going backwards um, in time zones. Yeah. It was really a mess. And one of the things that they were talking about at the conference that I was at was how important it is to be grounded. And I said, of course so. I went to my hotel took off my shoes and put my feet in the bare grass and it's tremendously helpful. Yeah, it's it's amazing what you see people, you know, in New York City, you know, living on the 33rd floor of an apartment and um it, you know, I think over time it just puts a stress on your immune system, I would imagine. Um so getting back to uh your Rife uh handbook, now, with the sauna portion of the handbook, um, now there are different types of saunas, and you know some people may know, but some people may not. Uh, the two main types are just the regular conventional saunas, and then there's the far infrared saunas. Is that right? Um, by regular conventional, do you mean hot rocks? Yeah. 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 Well. I explain in my sauna therapy book uh, the different types of heat. Um, think of heat as a range of frequencies, mm-hmm. which it is. So when you have hot rocks, there are a range of frequencies. Far infrared saunas are very specific wavelengths out of that heat spectrum. Mm-hmm. Wavelengths that Uh, are responsible for stimulating growth in the body, Mm -hmm. hatching eggs, creating life, Mm -hmm. uh, and creating, uh, uh, helping the body detoxify. So that's why the far infrared wavelengths, I think it's about between 9.35 microns and... 12 microns in that range. You're talking about very specific, narrow range of, of a measurement that is responsible for most of the um, benefit that people get in saunas. So am I, is my understanding of the far infrared sauna correct? Um, in, as far as the far infrared saunas go... Is am I correct in saying that there, even within that group of saunas, there are different? Um, you know, some of those saunas have different frequencies themselves, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. That's why in my sauna therapy book, I have a ch- um, a chart of the electromagnetic spectrum that explains exactly where in the frequency continuum everything is: visible light, ultraviolet. Uh, infrared, that kind of thing. And, and it's also reproduced in my Rife Handbook in Appendix C. Okay. I should say on my website, Appendix C is reproduced on my website and it's downloadable for everybody as a free PDF. Oh. And it, it's called Healing with Electromedicine and Sound Therapies. 
and it explains it very scientifically but very practically too so that the layperson can understand it how exactly uh, rice therapy works, how lasers work, why LEDs work, what the basis is for color therapy. It takes a, a good sampling of different types of electromagnetic devices, including pulse magnetic fields, and it explains why they help heal the body. Because I get a lot of people, I, I just got um, an email from this woman mm -hmm. a few days ago. She said, I'm really sick, I feel very drawn to rice therapy, but my husband poo-poos it and he doesn't believe in it. Mm -hmm. And I told her to go to my website and download that article. That article, which is Appendix C of the Rice Handbook, has been translated into Korean and German and has also appeared in three English language journals not to mention any number of websites. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a really good overview. So anybody who's a little bit hesitant or skeptical or doesn't quite know what to make of this therapy, this is a really good introduction. Yeah, it, it's important to get a little bit of knowledge behind you. And, you know, I think, too, you know, some people may be not believing in this type of stuff just because you know you don't see this on the channel nine news or you don't hear about it from your doctor so you know if we trust them as we do in our culture with our health um, then you wouldn't believe in this kind of stuff right and the thing is this stuff is so incredibly scientific mm -hmm. there are over 2,000 articles published over the last 40 years on the use of frequencies or magnetic fields or electromagnetic fields in the healing of the body and the eradication of disease. And that's all in my book. And it's also on my website. You can go to the original uh, site that has all these articles compiled and read them yourself. It's not voodoo. It's not mysticism. Mm -hmm. It sounds science that unfortunately is not taught to uh, students in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I want to contrast it to Germany where uh, portable, little portable frequency devices that you can wear around your waist, they're about the size of a large remote control. Yeah. You can go to your doctor, get a diagnosis. The doctor will create a program for you on a little chip card and give it to you in your machine. You wear it for a week and you get the frequencies via electrode patches. You can either hold on to electrode cylinders or if you just want to wear it and do other things, mm -hmm. you can put electrode patches on your body, the same kind of patches that are used in salt for TENS machines here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And it then you go back to your doctor in a week or two and you'll be told, well, you're better, let's do another program, or you're fine, you don't have to come back. Wow. Uh, they laugh at us <laughs> in Europe because we are so backward here. Yeah. Although it's really not... It's, it's due to misinformation and deliberate omissions by Big Pharma. Mm. And a lot of doctors, they're so swamped they don't have time to read about this stuff. Some doctors are very close-minded, in which case I would suggest get a different doctor. And some doctors are great. There, there are many doctors who are using this therapy. They may not advertise it because they can't, right. because they'll lose their licenses if they do. But some doctors and other holistic practitioners manage to sneak it into their practices. Wow, that's that's actually pretty shocking considering the standard of care, you know. Yeah, well, there are some doctors who have been very open about using the devices, and all I can think of is, well, bless their hearts mm. and hope that they don't get into <laughs> any trouble. <laughs> You're right, right. And uh, You see, that's, that's why it's so important for people to get their own machines 
Um, yeah. I don't have a great love of the medical pharmaceutical cartel. Anything that is designed to disempower people mm-hmm. really rubs me the wrong way. Right. And my book, except for maybe a couple of things in there, the entire book, all the complementary therapies in Chapter 3, light, sound, color, inclined bed ther- therapy, colloidal silver, you can get a generator and make it yourself. All of these therapies are designed to give people the most empowerment, the most flexibility mm. to treat themselves so they don't have to rely on not only somebody else, but methods that are questionable at as to whether or not they can really help. Right. At best questionable. Um, and in, right. your, in your book, you mention you also talk about the, you know, uh, which machines you recommend and things like that. So people can get your book and know exactly what, uh, what machines you think highly of and things like that. Right. Right. And right. So, and so now, what uh, I've heard about uh, something called the biomodulator from Dr. Jerry Tennant. Um, is that any? Is that in, you know related to the Rife machine in any way, or is it different? Uh, it's different. It's related in as much as um, the biomodulator is designed to impart life-giving voltage or electrons into the body. Okay. So that, um, in layman's terms. Uh, Juice. You know, some people just don't have enough energy to do what it takes to get better. So even if you disable microbes, if the person is really depleted, they just don't have enough energy to utilize whatever it is they're given. So I have a biomodulator, and I love it. Okay. And in fact, I I encourage people, if, if they want more information on the biomodulator, to go to my website, rifehandbook.com, R-I-F is in Frank E, handbook, and contact me, and I'll send them information on the biomodulator. Oh, excellent. The biomodulator is specifically designed to give to the uh, body the exact amount of current that the brain and the nervous system use in order to heal. Tense machines impart current into the body, too, but they don't really heal. They uh, help eliminate pain by numbing the C fibers of the nerve cells Uh so that your your C fibers are so dampened and frayed that you can't even feel the pain. But that's just putting a Band-Aid on it. Right, right. The biomodulator... uh, provides about a fraction, I forget which number, but it provides a fraction of what a TENS machine does so that the brain and nervous system can actually take that information and use it in a way that they can heal. Wow. So the energy from the biomodulator is biocompatible. Mm. Uh, when I hurt, hurt my back, I stuck electrode patches, one on either side of my lower spine, and I wore the biomodulator around my waist in a fanny pack. It's pretty small. Mm -hmm. And at first I could barely stand up, but after about three hours, I felt well enough to go to the gym and have a workout. Wow. That's crazy. It's just amazing how this... It's amazing how there's this kind of technology out there and... You know, it's it's not, it's kind of shocking, but kind of not that people don't know about it. But I guess that's what our goal is today: is to get this information out. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, we've got one final segment coming up after the break with Nina Silver at RifeHandbook.com. I hope you're enjoying the interview so far and getting a lot out of it. I just wanted to tell you really quickly about a program by Chris Kresser called The Healthy Baby Code. And if you haven't heard of Chris Kresser, he's got a blog called chriskresser.com. And he's put together an amazing course on how to have a healthy baby and how to avoid things like autism and childhood diseases. And, you know, a lot of kids get leukemia these days. And it's just, you know, childhood diseases 
diseases is rampant. And if you're looking to avoid all that and to have the healthiest baby possible, definitely check out the Healthy Baby Code. You can find it at extremehealthradio.com slash baby code. And it comes with about five and a half hours of video uh, presentations. It comes with audio presentations so you can download them to your iPod. It's got hundreds of pages of resources materials, an ebook and bonus files. You get all kinds of things like cheat sheets, meal plans, how to breastfeed, how long to breastfeed, natural birthing. He's got the whole thing just covered from A to Z in this course. So I highly recommend if you're looking to get pregnant or if you already are pregnant, you got to check this out. It's the Healthy Baby Code by Chris Kresser. And again, you can find it at extremehealthradio.com slash baby code. Okay, we are with Nina Silver from rifehandbook.com. And Nina, I wanted to ask you some, just a couple, you know, the, a couple practical questions. Uh, do you use the Rife uh, machine every day? And if so, for how long? Um, I don't use it every day. Uh, it depends what's going on. If I want to detox, mm -hmm. if there's a particular health condition I want to address, I'll use it. Uh, I use it for my dogs. I have a uh, radiant plasma unit called mm -hmm. the Pearl, which is a really excellent machine from Canada. Mm -hmm. And that's also in my book, along with uh, pictures. And uh, when my dogs were having problems with uh, mange, and uh, skin conditions. I was using it for them, and it really helped. Wow. Now, I have a, just a sort of a question for myself um, personally. I have a torn ACL in my knee, and I have not had surgery on it. I tore it about four years ago. Uh, would the Rife technology, I, I guess I'm curious if it would work on that, and if, and if it maybe, if it wouldn't regrow a tissue, if I did end up having surgery, would it help me recover from surgery? It would. I would uh, use the biomodulator for okay. that, though. Okay. And that would actually restore voltage, almost like a positive way uh, for that, right? It would provide the energy that your body needs to uh, eliminate waste, regrow tissue. Interesting. Uh, and it would feed the cells energy so that nutrients could enter the cells and waste could leave. I see. And in your book, you know, I, I was reading earlier that uh, we just had a, a spot for the Healthy Baby Code by Chris Kresser. And um, in your book, you mention, you know, you, t you talk about women using this for, you know, during pregnancy and those types of issues. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how it works if women are pregnant? Well... Um, as you know, most uh, you know most of the medical literature, even homeopathy labels, they say uh, do not use if pregnant, and that's often because we just don't know what the effects will be mm -hmm. of a given treatment. And I tend to be a little on the conservative side in needing to caution people because even though I try as much as I can to explain in my book that people need to tailor the guidelines to their own needs and their own individual situation, mm -hmm. sometimes uh, they're very literal and they can't kind of make the leap between a suggestion and thinking that it's set in stone. So I say in my book that, you know, they should be careful during pregnancy, mm -hmm. mainly because if a woman has a raging infection, you know, if, if there's more microbial waste released as a result of the rice sessions, you don't want it crossing the placenta to the baby. Mm -hmm. But... You know, what are the alternatives? Taking antibiotics that poison your liver? Right. <laughs> so <laughs> if I were pregnant and I had an infection, I would definitely use rice therapy. And people have used rice therapy for their children uh -huh. and as well as young animals. And they say that they have healthy babies. 
Wow. That's... So I think if, if you're in a situation, especially if you have Lyme disease or you have cancer mm -hmm. or you're pregnant, try and find a holistic practitioner who's familiar with right therapy mm -hmm. and who can give you some guidance. Um, by the way, nursing, if you have a, an infection mm -hmm. and you're using the rice machine, uh, the microbial waste could come out in the milk. So what I suggest in my book is that women should express the milk first and freeze it, say about three, four, five days worth. Mm -hmm. And then while they're ricing, they could uh, give the baby the milk that they had frozen. And then when they're done ricing, they can go back to nur nursing directly. Oh, I see. I see. Wow. Man, there's so many uses to the, to the Rife technology. Um, and, you know, another thing I like about your book, just as far as giving it, you know, giving people power back to their own health and starting to become their own doctor, um, is it's like I was saying before, it's an entire holistic primer. So I was curious about your thoughts on gluten. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are going gluten-free these days, and some people are understanding the connection between autism and gluten and things like that. So uh, what are your thoughts about gluten grains? I think that everybody should stay away from gluten grains. Um, even in so-called normal people who mm -hmm. do not uh, test as having celiac disease, mm -hmm. it has been shown that it takes the body... Uh, 72 hours for the intestines to get back to normal. The sticky proteins, the sticky proteins in gluten uh, wear down the villi in the gut. And these are little projectiles that help us absorb food from the small intestine into the bloodstream. And if the villi are worn down, if they have holes in them, mm -hmm. you get all kinds of problems. Once the intestine is compromised, you get incompletely digested food particles going from the intestine into the bloodstream where the food particles then can travel to cells, irritate them, and cause allergies. Your body can also have a direct immune or autoimmune response to gluten mm -hmm. so that you may manifest uh, hypothyroidism, uh, Hashimoto's, mm -hmm. hy hy Hashimoto's thyroiditis. That's a mouthful. <laughs> and basically, the proteins in the thyroid gland are very similar from the proteins to the proteins in gluten, and the body will attack its own thyroid gland. People, uh, holistic practitioners are understanding more and more that anybody with a thyroid issue needs to stay away from gluten. I'm pretty easygoing about a lot of stuff, but I'm almost doctrinaire on gluten because I have yeah. seen the damage that it causes. Yeah. It's also very addictive. Mm -hmm. uh, the opiates in gluten latch onto the receptor sites in the body that ordinarily would uh, receive endorphins. So you are replacing the receptor sites in your body. So the body has receptor sites for endorphins, and instead of getting its own endorphins, the receptor sites will receive the proteins from the gluten. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that causes uh, addiction. That's why people are bredaholics. Yeah, yeah. People just love it. And, you know, I think it also, does it steal uh, iodine from your body too, which is also connected to the thyroid? I'm not aware of it doing that. Hmm. What do you think about all the, you know, speaking of gluten and people's diets, and what, what do you think this is having an effect on people's DNA? You know, like, you know, do you think that, we're, we're actually damaging ourselves at the DNA level, and if, if we continue eating this way as a culture, as a species, what's going to happen to our, 
genes in four or five generations from now if we keep eating this way? That's a good question. Try one generation. There was a study that just came out on uh, babies whose mothers had committed all kinds of dietary indiscretions. Uh -huh. You can cause major damage in one generation. Um, a real good place to read about that is Weston Price's book, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. I think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. And he was a dent. Do you know who he is? Yes, yes. I think there's a free copy of his book on the internet as well, I think. But yeah, I've read his book. Well, for those of the listeners who might not know, he was a dentist who went around the world um, decades ago mm. to see why people were getting so much tooth decay. And now, to us, now it's a no-brainer, but back then, uh, the Western diet had just become really big, meaning refined flours, high amounts of sugars. And he went all over and looked at native peoples who most of them did not eat wheat, mm -hmm. and they had healthy fats, good animal protein, mm -hmm. and the, the children born of women who had a healthy diet, he saw marked uh, differences and their dental arches, and the way the teeth were formed or misshapen. And he took pictures, which are quite dramatic. Mm -hmm. you know, pictures worth a thousand words. You look at those pictures and you say, oh my God, <laughs> I'm never going to eat this crap again. Look what I'm doing to my unborn kids. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's fa it's fascinating. Fascinating information. Um, so I wanted to give, you know, as we're wrapping up here in the next five minutes, I wanted to um, ask you about, as far as the Rife machine goes, um, if people want to, you know, maybe some people don't want to buy them because they may be a little bit expensive for some people. Um, are there places or doctors that they can go to, maybe a website or something to figure out if there's doctors in their area that use the Rife machine? See, that's tricky because it's not legal in the U.S. to use uh, these particular frequency devices for the treatment of medicine and disease. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the doctors will lose their license. The best suggestion I can give people is to uh, join Yahoo groups that deal with Rife technology or electromedicine okay. and see if you can hook up <clears throat> with somebody in your area who might have equipment uh, you could also get my book. I mean, it's it's about much more than Rife too. So I think even if you don't have a Rife machine or aren't even thinking of getting one, mm -hmm. there's enough to keep you busy that you'll really get a good handle on what else you can do. But my book has a listing of reputable manufacturers, uh, how you can contact them, and most manufacturers will have a 30-day tryout period mm -hmm. minus a restocking fee, okay. which is a really good uh, way to see if rice therapy is for you. Interesting. And you can get an inexpensive unit for about thirteen or $1,400. Okay. I mean, that's, that's so worth it, especially considering, um, you know, what the FDA is going to be doing as far as our, you know, access to herbs and, and medicines and things like that because it seems like they're cracking down and trying to make you know herbs illegal and things like that so uh, it would be good to have one of these machines just I guess uh, in your arsenal right absolutely yeah um, and also regarding the situation that you just described there's I have one word stockpiling <laughs> yeah you know we had um, recently we had Dr. Bob Marshall on, and I know you know who he is, and he's, he does a lot of work with energy and uh, the plasma field of the body and that kind of thing. And we also had um, Dr. Gerald Smith. You ask about the GB4000. Yeah. Um, that's a good machine, and that's also listed in my book. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Now, what, what do you think is going to be in the future for Rife Technology? Are there lots of adv adv advances going on in the... Uh, 
field of energy medicine as far as coming up with new frequencies and making the actual machines better and things like that? Yes, in a word. Okay. In, in what ways is it, a, is it a field that's growing kind of like the computer industry where it, it doubles every few years or is it more slow than that with the rife energy medicines? That's a good question. I can't, uh, it probably is not growing as fast as the computer industry, mostly because people don't know about it. Mm -hmm. But there have been studies now done in a Philadelphia hospital that are headed by an oncologist. That's um, mentioned in Appendix E, I believe, of my Rice Handbook. Mm -hmm. They're using a kind of a souped-up rice machine, I guess is the best way to put it. And they're using frequencies to uh, kill cancer cells. And they've had really good success with that. My only concern with that is that I don't want the medical industry to start appropriating a technology that should be for everyone. And I don't want to see a situation where the only way you could get rice therapy is to go to a doctor right. because that would put it right back into the hands of uh, the medical pharmaceutical cartel, mm. which is not what I want. But I think awareness of rice therapy is growing. People are really frustrated. They know that what they're doing is not working. It, they don't want to feel horrible with the 10 zillion effects of drugs that are not the effect that they want, right, right. which the drug industry calls side effects, so you don't pay attention to that, but they're all effects. Mm -hmm. And when you're taking an antibiotic, yes, it does kill a targeted microbe, but it also harms your liver, it ruins your digestive tract, it causes a whole host of other effects. I think people are really waking up to this. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest obstacle, in a way, is the media because you're not going to have, you know, you're not going to have a major newscast say, "Hey, look at this great thing we have—a <laughs> rice machine." Mm -hmm. And guess what, people? You don't need a doctor. <laughs> you can buy one for fifteen hundred dollars and use it on yourself, your friends, your family, your pets. And there are no side effects or yeah. negative effects. Just drink water and keep a good diet. You're not going to find that no. on mainstream media. They've totally sold out. Yeah. So that's why I'm doing this interview. That's why I wrote the book. Mm. That's why I give presentations, because I want people to know that there are more options, better options, right. viable options, and they don't need to keep themselves small and powerless and hopeless that there are ways to overcome cancer. Crazy, huh? People are, you know, if, if you join these lists, and there are groups, by the way, in the appendix, one of the appendices of my right handbook, mm -hmm. there's a list of internet chat groups that you can join. People are talking about their successes. They're also talking about their questions and what they perceive as their failures, you know, it's self-help. Right. But this is really the medicine of the future, where everybody makes it a point to learn more and mm. to become an expert on themselves, yep. because nobody knows more about you than you do. Yeah, that's, you know, it's all about options, right? You know, just getting, giving people options that work, empowering people. You know, there's no need to, if you take care of yourself, there's no need to ever go to a doctor, you know, unless you get in a car crash or, you know, something catastrophic happens. But that's what's so cool about your book. I know we're wrapping up here, but um, we didn't even get into, you know, colloidal silver generators or ozone generators and all of the amazing stuff. So if people are interested in energy medicine, you have to get this book. It's so good. So go to rifehandbook.com, R-I-F-E handbook.com. And, uh, you know, it's so worth it. So thank you, uh, Nina, for joining us today. Thank you, Justin. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Would you mind uh, hanging on while I close out the show? Not at all. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, listening to another edition of Extreme Health Radio. You can find this show page at extremehealthradio.com slash 20, and we'll have all the links and information on that page, as well as the transcript, which will be 
you know, a few weeks out, but uh, we're doing the best we can on those. And I would ask you, if you found value in this show, could you do me a huge favor and perhaps uh, click like on this show page and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And maybe if you, you know, really like the interview, please share it with your friends and things like that. I would really, really uh, appreciate that because we're kind of relying on each and every listener to get the word out for us. So that would be great. And don't forget, we also have a store on our website with lots of great products on there that think you'll be really excited about. So, and also we're 100% listener supported. So if you would like to donate ever, uh, no pressure, no problem if you can't. I know it's hard times out there. So if you're having a hard time, no problem at all, but you 